Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. After releasing overview videos of the CUAV V5 Plus Autopilot System and the CUI MK15 Digital Transmission System, today I'm going to provide you with a quick tutorial in which I'm going to demonstrate how these two systems work together. Just to refresh your memory, the CUI MK15 is a long-range digital radio control and video system. Under ideal conditions, it should get you to a maximum distance of about 15 kilometers, which is quite impressive, and it is based on an air unit and a ground unit that features a 1080p LCD screen that will enable you to monitor the live feed of the HD FAB camera, which is connected to the air unit via the telemetry data, and adjust the parameters of the flight controller that is connected to the air unit. Prior to this video, I've updated the CUI MK15 system to the latest available versions of both ground and air units. And now, as you can see, the OSD data containing most of the important telemetry data is going to be overlay on your FPV feed. And I might post another video in which I'm going to show you how the updating procedure of the CUI MK15 system is done. As for the CUI V5 Plus, it's an advanced autopilot system that supports both PX4 and Arduino firmware, and I'm going to use it together with the Neo V2, which is also made by CUAV, a precise GPS model that double acts as a safety switch. In order to set up the CUAV V5 Plus, first connect it to your computer using its USB Type-C port, flash it with your desired firmware, and after that, go through the basic setup procedure, which includes selecting the type of the frame that you're going to use and calibrating the different sensors. As for connecting all the peripherals to the flight controller, first, each motor is going to be connected to a servo connector, and this is something that I'm going to do later upon installing the system on the quadcopter that I'm going to use. The power unit, which can be connected to up to 14S batteries, should be connected to the power 1 port. The GPS unit to the GPS and safety switch port. And from the CUI MK15 air unit, I'm connecting the telemetry in port of the air unit to the telemetry 1 out port of the flight controller and the radio signal output port of the air unit to the SBUS in port of the flight controller. Now, after this very easy procedure, we've got everything wired up besides the motors and of course the need to mount everything on a drone. So basically the flight controller sends the telemetry data to the air unit, which in turn sends it back to the ground station and the ground station sends the radio signal to the air unit, which sends it to the flight controller. After connecting everything together, you need to make sure that the radio signal is working properly. For that, you'll need to open the software that you're going to use. In my example, I'm using the Q ground control application. And you should note that you need to first calibrate the sticks of the radio controller itself, and only then go through the software calibration procedure in the app that you're going to use. As for using the Q ground control application on the CUI MK15 ground station, under data link settings in the CUI TX application, make sure that USB COM is selected under connection and under flight controller, make sure that the correct type of flight controller that you're using is selected in order to properly overlay the telemetry data on the FPV feed using the CUI FPV app. In addition, in order to display the HD FPV feed inside the Key Ground application, you'll need to define the RTSP address of the camera that you're going to use under application settings, and at least currently only one camera is supported, unlike on the CUI FPV app, which supports two cameras simultaneously. The next thing that I need to do is to install this system on my 650 millimeters frame which is something that I intend to do in the next two weeks or so, and then take it for a test flight, which is of course going to be covered in an upcoming video. Now, before wrapping up this video, I must admit that it might seem that I'm a little bit oversimplifying things, but things are pretty simple, so this is not a very complicated procedure. Just pay attention that you are using the correct pinout on both flight controller and a unit. For example, when connecting the signal from the 
flight controller to the air unit, I had to switch between the VCC and ground wires on the air unit. And I also had to move the SBUS pin on the connector, which connects to the flight controller. So just pay extra attention and take your time because in case you are going to get confused, you might damage both items. Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.